Hey guys, welcome to episode 4 of the Road to Anaheim 1 series here on Start Your Systems. Today, I'm joined by Mr. Luke Sullivan. How are you doing, Luke? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for joining me for this episode. Appreci yeah. I look forward to talking to you about the upcoming season, about last season, things like that. Uh, first of all, you may know Luke from watching some of the streams, but uh, his number is actually 11 in RF. But, uh, well, tell them why you're racing uh, with number 811. So, for this offseason, I've been racing the, the Battleground series that Hubbard's been putting on. And uh, no one's gotten after the numbers so far, so I just thought I'd bring it back with my three digit for the, for the series. And yep, it's, fun with the skin. it's cool having a series where they actually, like, are paying attention and caring about numbers. Like, why don't you just run your three digit and you can earn a number? It kind of adds like a level of prestige to the series a little bit. Oh yeah, makes me want to earn 11 a map too. Right, exactly. I feel like that's probably why you did it. So so I guess uh, tell, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Like how long have you been playing MX Sim? Uh, when did you go pro? Stuff like that. Um, I've been playing Sim for about like four years. I got it for a Christmas present. Best uh, Christmas present ever. <laughs> oh yeah. It's or worse, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I went pro in 2019 at, I think it was Seattle Supercross. And I made my first main, actually. Now, correct me if, I wrong, if I'm wrong, but you started novice that same season that you went pro. Is that right? Oh yeah. I started, so I actually, I was novice at A1. Didn't even make the main, and then the next week got moved up because I had too fast of a lap. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I somehow made the main, so it was kind of weird. It was, it was wild. Like the fastest progression you've ever seen. One week, I know. can't qualify, and the next week, uh, you're too fast. <laughs> I know. I, I, didn't, I didn't really understand, honestly. It, Carter, actually, the person on the last episode, he, he helped me out a lot when I was coming up through amateurs and stuff and I was actually on this team but he was the first team I joined as pro yeah that's sweet he's pretty helpful when it comes to like teaching people how to be good so so uh so you went pro in 2019 what would you say uh, your biggest accomplishment has been in sim since you started racing I would say actually this this last year in 2022 when I won a1 a supercross and I have like I think it was like 60 people on my stream, which may not sound big, but for Sim, I mean... That is pretty big feels, for a Sim stream. Yeah, like most, feels, it felt like everyone was watching me when I looked over and I was like, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I'll say, probably uh, just keeping the red plate in GPs for a little while. Yeah, I winning A1 is no joke. Like, that's when everybody's there. Every, like everybody's like oh it's brand new season i want to try and try to do good a lot of people's seasons fall apart there <laughs> <laughs> but yours went about as well as it could at least at the first round there so yeah it was like like you said it, as a person who plays sim you always watch back the a1 train even if you don't play like i feel like if you're watching some back you're watching a1 yeah and even like some people that don't watch every round per se they all everybody tunes in to watch a1 I know Callan, oh, yeah. Callan says like A1 is always the highest viewed, highest viewed round of the year. So, so uh, talking, you mentioned you won A1 in 2022. How was the rest of your season? Honestly, it, w it was not great. I, I went to round two feeling good, got a little cocky, didn't do so well. Then I didn't make the main at the next round. I was just after that, I kind of just, kind of just gave up and kind of. For a few weeks, I actually didn't even race, and I came back. Did some, was feeling the 415 Supercross, did all right. Uh, dropped back down for 250s and outdoors. Had an all right national season. Had a few podiums, uh, and then in GPS, I actually, I was, I, I won the first round, and the like. I won, I think I won three GPS this year, and I had the red plate for quite a while. But I went on a vacation, and that was kind of the end of it. Yeah. Now, I guess I should have clarified, but you won A1 in the 250 West class, and then yeah, and then after things didn't go your way, you switched to 450 full-time, which I feel like, what's the point of staying down in 250s if 
you're not doing good, like might as well get some more experience with the big dogs. So exactly. But yeah, so you did uh, GPS, outdoors, and Supercross last year, right? Yep. Yeah, three uh-huh. different series. That's a lot of racing, especially. Do they? Uh, well, obviously, outdoors and Supercross don't overlap, but do GPS overlap with Supercross at all? Um, no. I actually GP started. I think maybe a week or two later than uh, AMA motocross. Okay, so it, so it doesn't kinda... line up with real life at all then. <laughs> no, yeah, the GPs don't because it's, I don't I don't know when they start GPs IRL, but. Yeah, yeah, I I always thought the GP tracks were so cool, but I haven't been able to do one of the series. But I'd I'd like to at some point. Oh but... yeah, I I actually think the GPs, uh, in my opinion, would fit my style better just because I'm a little cautious. Of a rider and <laughs> yeah. by the by the time GPs come up, like you're kind of warmed up in motocross and had a few rounds on your butt. Yeah, I, I feel that. So uh, 2020 or 2022 didn't go exactly to plan. So, in what areas are you trying to improve for 2023? Um, uh, I think well, a big one for me is my starts. Starts like killed me last year, in my opinion, because yeah. I would just. I'm not, I'm actually, I feel like I'm a stronger e-road rider than like beginning of the race, so I'm pretty comfortable with that, it's just when you're in last place coming off the gate and people who you know can win are in first. It's are like, you a first or third person player? I'm a third. Okay. I'm going to say it's so hard to work your way through the pack in first person in the first laps because you can't see the people around you. Oh, yeah. I can't imagine. Oh. Uh, another thing I need to work on is I, for some reason, I always, like I said, I come through the pack, I do fine, I get up to like fifth, and then like the last like two minutes, I just fall apart. Like, <laughs> I just fall apart. Is it like nerves or just... I, I don't even know. It's just I have like one mistake, and then I just it get leads so to a bunch. mad. <laughs> because I, I get so mad because I like worked my whole race up to this point, and then I just threw it all away, and I'm like... Like, kind of reminds think, me of like Chase Sexton in real life, like throwing a race <laughs> away at the end of the race. <laughs> oh, I, I, I've had, I've had plenty of those. Like motocross, I think I might even had a few this year. Like, it's not good. Yeah, it's always yeah. a bummer. Like, I can, I, I've never been in that situation, but I can only imagine how frustrating it is to lead like the whole race and then make one mistake, and you're like, there goes my entire race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, yeah, it's not fun. But, yeah. I mean, you get, you try to learn from it. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, that's all you can do. So, uh, what are you doing in this off season to uh, prepare for 2023 Supercross? I've, I've been doing the Battleground series, like I said, and I honestly took like a month or maybe a month and a half off and just like playing just everybody like needs out. to everybody needs to recharge their batteries <laughs> oh yeah especially after like gps and motocross you're just like you're just kind of done you're like, oh yeah i feel that but yeah i've just been playing uh battlegrounds and then me and like all the guys in discord will we have like kind of thing called like a fun night where we kind of like get in teams and just do some do some la- or do some like tracks and keep up with some points just to keep up the competitiveness, but keep having fun with like off season stuff and take nothing too seriously. Yeah, if you take stuff serious in the off season, then by the time Supercross comes around, you're gonna be burnt out. So exactly. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have that fun in the off season, but still getting the laps in, the races in, things like that. Well, sweet. So sounds like you're getting yourself prepared for uh, hopefully a slightly better, at least slightly better, 2023. My, uh, I guess my last question for you: Who do you, uh, who are you gonna pick for the 450 title in Supercross this year? Um, I, I think I'm gonna have to. It's, it's a hard between on Payson and Carter, in my opinion. I mean, the Claire's always there, but I, I think I'm gonna have to go with Payson just because I, I, I know him. I, I know both of them quite well, but I know Payson just had a pretty bad crash, and I know he's gonna be able to. Play a, play a good amount coming up to this oh, super yeah, yep. season. He, uh, he broke so, his wrist in real life. It gives him some more time. As long as that doesn't affect his gameplay. <laughs> gives him I, some time I, I to, don't imagine it will. Yeah, it gives him some time to try hard before A1. So I I, I can understand that pick for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's, that's my pick. 
But yeah, I do agree with you. It's going to be a sweet battle to watch. Uh, so uh, I guess one thing I didn't uh, didn't ask is what, what what are some goals you got set for yourself for this upcoming season? <clears throat> um, I my goal for like this like kind of rookie season kind of not because I've been going off and off and on and off in the 450 class. It's just a be a top five, the top ten guy. I, I think I can get some podiums if I just get a good start. I yes. think I have the speed. Yeah, honestly. especially if you uh, get those starts, that's a big key. Because once you start oh, yeah. up there, it just helps you stay more consistent, keep a better flow the whole time. But exactly. I agree, national number 11, top fives, tops 10, should be doable. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel, I, feel like I, I feel like I can do it. I just got to not get frazzled, not have those late race mistakes. And be yeah, always easier said than done, but you got to have those <laughs> goals, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Especially at, like, A1, when they're like, oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks for joining me, Luke. I really appreciate it. Hopefully the viewers uh, got to learn a little bit more about you, and maybe they have someone uh, someone else to root on come Anaheim 1. So thanks yeah. for joining me. No problem. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, and uh, leave us a comment down below. Tell us uh, what you thought of it, and... We'll see you in the next episode of the Road to Anaheim 1 series here on Start Your Systems.